Welcome back, everyone. Dana and I have now both recovered from spilled drinks. Yes. <laughs> Even though Dana and I are day, not in the same to? room. <laughs> I spilled uh, my drink first and then Dana yeah. spilled hers. Oh, Lord. Yeah. Um, and I, for those of you that don't know, like I see clients this way too, and I always have my Coke with the cap on because I'm so prone to spilling with proprioceptive things, but clearly I didn't have the cap on tight enough because it fell and you could hear the spray and it was like Psh, and i was like uh dana you good you need a you need a moment you need a moment oh too funny but it's oh, a good man. it's a good uh, here's my one of my segues it's a good analogy for stress yeah and sort of this idea uh, uh it's a biological construct allostatic load i believe but it can be applied because we'll talk about biology and psychology yeah. Or all of it together again, I'm there, I sort of separated it. But it's this idea of what goes into your stress bucket in any given day, and then what can make that kind of overflow, right? So I, when we first came on today, um, I can't tell if I've had an allergy thing going on, although Sunday night I had a fever. So I'm thinking I'm also, uh, maybe fighting a cold or yeah. some sort of virus. Um, in thinking about allostatic loads, so there are environment, there are trees and grass are really big here right now in terms of the pollen. Those are some of my allergies. So I'm already gonna be a little bit allergic in that. So my system's already gonna be activated, right? Is that what made me more prone to get a cold? And, or was my body just heating up in a fever to try to deal with all the inflammation, whatever. So if I have allergies and then I get exposed to a virus, and then let's say this didn't happen, but let's say I wasn't eating really well. So my diet wasn't great. I did have mm -hmm. a bunch of nights in a row where I slept really terribly. So I was tired. Mm -hmm. So yep. all those things can add up to like knock your immune system down. And we are learning so much more about how biology, how our biology handles that idea of allostatic load. Are you going to, what was the word you used that you were talking about that you were? Uh, Hormesis. Yeah, Just yeah, hormetic, Which hormetic, is, hormetic, uh, hormetic yeah. response it comes from that same idea of yep. tissue stress, cellular stress, cellular death specifically, you know, sort of trying to stave that off. But I'll talk with people a lot that I neurodivergence that I work with who might say something. I'll say maybe bandwidth is a better way to describe it. I'll use mm -hmm. the analogy of a bucket of water that's filled like I always have in my mind one of those orange Home Depot five gallon buckets because they're heavy. <laughs> and if you try to pick them up by the handle and they're full of water, the handle always breaks. But it's that idea of sort of sloshing it around. It's very heavy. So yeah. if you are autistic, your bucket has always got a certain amount of water in it. And then you add these things to it. Was there the fact that my, with all these things going on, my mood, I was, I was more irritable, which makes sense, right? Mm -hmm. um, that thing, uh, if I have something going on at work or something that would be stressful, it's much more likely to be, to kind of throw me over the edge because it's already full with those yep. things. And if you're someone who's neurodivergent, yours is always full. And then if you have a lot of, uh, some or a lot of these co-occurring things, if you're ADHD and autistic, if you're either of those and you have a bunch of things that we see go with that oftentimes, Ehlers-Danlos, allergies, this whole emerging area that I'm just learning about, mast cell activation syndrome, that can all be operating in the background and make your overall load go really high. And then it, the whole point of this is you may not be aware of these things happening, but they're having an effect. Yeah. And so if you blow up at work or you're irritable or you your mood changes and you're like, why do I feel like this? You know, Why am I feeling like the harbinger of doom and the world's going to end, it could be that your bucket's super full and that's how it's manifesting, right? Because it's there's so much, your brain's freaking out. Right? Yeah. And that, you know, if, if we're looking at, okay, so if we're, we take that same analogy of the bucket, right? And that stress or load is water or liquid in the bucket, mm -hmm, right? Mm -hmm. If you, if your bucket is pretty full, yeah, 
it doesn't take much for it to overflow, right? Exactly. And I think sometimes whenever someone's like, I don't, Gwen, I don't understand why I had a very disproportionate reaction to mm. something. Yeah. My first thing is like, well, what's going on cumulatively yeah. for you, right right? right? right. Just because you got, you know, a blue pen, someone gave you the blue pen instead of the black one and you lost your mind. That's yeah. not like, <laughs> that's probably the reason, right? Because, you know, you you and your husband are, aren't getting a divorce because he forgot to yeah. take out the trash one night. You know, like- but That, like, that blue something... pen one, by the way, just kind of sends shudders. Yeah, you're like, but Gwen, but that yeah. one's like, that's really, that's all, that's, yeah. But yeah, that's right. the, the but, last straw, right? That's the last straw. Right. Yeah. And I think like for many of my clients that I'm supporting, their sensory systems, they wake up with a pretty full bucket. Like maybe yeah. they didn't get a good night's sleep, right? Or or maybe they've never gotten a good night's sleep. Yeah. Maybe it takes them a lot of energy just to get through the day because they're thinking about, like I've got a client, if he doesn't, when he's carrying water to his room mm -hmm. and he's using an open glass, mm -hmm. which is why, you know, some of my clients just like they use closed things. Okay. <laughs> but he's, yeah. you know, he'd rather just take it up, take up the yeah. his water in a glass, an open glass from the kitchen to his bedroom upstairs. He has to watch his hand the entire time. Yeah. Yeah. Tonight. He cannot yeah. like just... Walk up the stairs, like and and he gets up there and it's like I'm exhausted. Yeah, because yeah. his body, his proprioceptive system, yep. is not you know it, it needs a lot of input in order for it to know what it's doing. Yeah. So yeah. these are the things that fill buckets that we don't even know yeah, about. Yeah, typical wouldn't have to do right. They right. kind of take for granted. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right. I think, Dana, am I wrong in assuming or understanding that when we talk about allostatic load, mm -hmm. we're also talking about chronicity? Oh, um, yeah. Chronic Absolutely. stress, right? Absolutely. Or a chronic right. health issue that never goes away. It's always going right. to be operating in the background. Yeah. And autism right. is one of those. ADHD is one of those. Yeah. Yes, 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 yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. It's hard. I think it, you know, when you have a differently wired brain, right? Mm. Being in the world as it is today is very stressful. Um, it's yeah. hard. Yeah. Um, it's very fast paced. There's a lot of information. Uh, there's yeah. a lot of expectations um, socially yeah. and societally uh, that are yeah. quite yeah. still ableist. And yep. so, um, you know, uh, it, 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 it's a difficult thing. It is, I think, understanding what stresses you out, like mm -hmm. understanding what taxes, maybe that's another way we can Yeah, say yeah. And people say the stress is like, oh, the stress, it could be just... Carrying water you know, upstairs. You know, your daily, yeah, exactly. <laughs> you reminded me because I used to take, I used to go to bed with an empty, with a cup, that I'd fill from our water cooler because I have to have the right kind of water, of course. Until the night I went to kiss my wife goodnight and then I'm holding it and I bent over <laughs> and just... <laughs> I... And now I have a bottle with a cap that I put my yeah. nighttime water into off upstairs. Isn't that interesting? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I'm super klutzy, so I have yeah. to be really careful. Like, yeah. I will spill things inevitably or forget that I haven't put a yeah. lid on something and I'll bend over as well. Like, yeah. you know. And it'll show up in, t like, unexpected times. Like, first thing that popped in my mind was when I get a new car. Aside from the new car smell that everybody seems to love, but for me, it's just... Oh, my daughter hates smell. it. My daughter yeah. absolutely hates new car <sighs> smell. It's always like the buttons are in different places and you're yeah. having to, you feel discombobulated for a while, right? Because you really are. That's yeah. like what it's like to be autistic all the time. Um, and then you get used to it and now it can kind of run in the background without you having to think about it that much, yeah. right? When yeah. you travel, you don't know where everything is. Uh, it's that same rental sort of cars. Idea. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Most people can really identify with that. So yeah. if you can think about like if you were to change something, would it be would it tip the apple cart, so to speak? So we use the word stress, but we really mean anything that your body's having to do chronically to like run in the background. And the computer analogy, right? It it's, doesn't mean something's not running just because you're not seeing. It's still running in the background. It's doing its thing. And yeah. that serves as water in that bucket, so it'll be filled up easier. So when yep. you're sick or you have a test coming up and you're studying for it, and you're stressed out or you have a deadline or something like that, 
all of those things will contribute to that. And you might get sicker easier, for example. Allergy season, I'm noticing just being a little bit more uh, in a weird way, my thoughts are more macabre. So I'm, I'm, you know what I mean? Like the world is going to end and, oh, here comes summer, or the, the wildfires are coming back. And then I'm worrying about global warming. And so I'm like, oh, crap, I have to cut myself off from some of that. Stuff. This is why Dana doesn't watch the news. This is why I don't watch the news. Although it's interesting. So I want to know what's going on with he who yeah. shall not be named. And so last night I realized as we're talking about this, my wife and I found an adaptive way to do that. So Rachel Maddow, who we love and we used to watch every night, which we don't anymore because it's too stressful. She yeah. had a special just on what was happening in the trial nice. down from trial. And we love them. We know they're totally left wing biased. Let's get the update from these people that are going to laugh about certain things because they're ridiculous. We're not going to watch Fox News because it's be too stressful. Yeah. But we're like, okay, that's enough. That's enough for now. And yeah. maybe next week we'll watch another synopsis, right? So you figure out a way to balance the load, right? Yeah. Yeah. You got to know yourself. We say this a lot. You got to know yourself. You got to know how you tick. Yeah. You know, you learn what uh, the loads um, are. Yeah. You got to yeah. know. You know, yeah. the other piece too is um, I think something that gets so whenever I'm, working with clients in transition planning uh, mm. to their adulthoods, right? Helping yeah. helping adolescents transition to their adulthoods, right? Mm -hmm. Something that oftentimes gets lost is this kind of, the, the need for the person to know how they work mm -hmm. and then the ability to fully analyze what the demands are for the environments that they're going yeah, into. Yeah, that's so hard. It's a hard task. It's really hard. And even mm -hmm. when I'm talking to parents and working with parents on this, it's like, mm -hmm. look at you, you don't know if your kiddo can, you're questioning whether your kiddo is going to be successful in college because you mm -hmm. don't know exact, you can't articulate what the demands are in college. That's right. why. I know you right. went to college. Yeah, but yeah. you didn't go to college and go, oh, I broke it down by this task and this task and this task and this. You just went. Yeah, yeah. And so, did that seamlessly. Yeah, yeah. Right. And yeah. so how how is that and just being really thoughtful about it? But this it's, it's the same kind of process, you know? Yeah. As you, like we, For those of you that don't know, when we're in between taping episodes, we almost always have to go pee because therapists oh my God. fluids and we have like a 50 minute uh, letter. Point we, being, I, it's, yeah, we it's do it. full. You can't concentrate, right? I'm thinking of the my favorite socks have been discontinued, which I want to die over. So I've been trying to break in the new socks because they feel different. And every morning when I go to put them on, like I might ask myself, I can't. I don't have the bandwidth for this today. Or like yeah. when I'm picking clothes, I'll think, is is a slight irritant for this going to be something I can manage today? And if and sometimes it's yes, and I'm like, great, I'm going to try putting the new socks on. Other days it's like, I don't not today. I, don't have it. I can't do it. And that's it. So it is about that being aware of your body sense too, and where you're at. Do you have to use the restroom? Are the socks going to drive you nuts? Are you already allergic? So you know, adding something on top of it is going to be a problem, et cetera, et cetera. Yeah. Yeah. How do you see the things that are running in the background when they're running in the background? It's hard. So people like you that work yeah. with folks that do this, you're bringing up, usually there's this, 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 do you resonate with any of these? And they're like, yeah, yes, I'm, at, I'm, on. I'm creating the frameworks and I'm yeah. asking the right questions yeah, is what's exactly. happening. That's right. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. I mean, that is the benefit of, of therapeutic work. I mean, therapeutic mm work with a neuroaffirming person, I think. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, it's so sad, Dana. You know, I I recently um taken on a, a few new adult clients um that have had such awful experiences with other therapists mm -hmm. because they're like, I signed you homework. Mm -hmm. You didn't do it. Oh yeah. Um therefore you're not motivated in therapy. So I can't help you. And he, go away. Like, bye. Yeah. 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 Rather than and, what's going on there. I wonder what's happening. Yeah. Right. And they keep saying, you know, I've got like massive executive functioning issues. Like it's yeah. really hard <laughs> for me to execute things. So yeah. I actually need help closing the gap on that. And they're like, no, yes. you're capable. You're smart. You're, you're verbal. You're, you know, da, 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 da. Yeah. Um, yeah. that, and just, um, the, um, in so many ways they feel gaslit. Yeah. Yeah. 
Totally. Yep. Um, and so really going back and um, oh, reestablishing. What's, what's really interesting just in the news recently is uh, the Congress passed a uh, protections for workplace accommodation for pregnant women. So there's finally this understanding now that they, they're not disabled. So this is not ADA accommodations. It's I want to be very clear. Being pregnant is not a disability. <clears throat> However, there's been a realization that you're going through this massive biological change when you're growing another human inside of you, you know, <clears throat> and some accommodations need to be potentially made in the workplace. There is an entire 50% of the population that could need this and they finally are doing it. And it was things like, you know, flexible schedule, if someone has morning sickness and a lot of other, you know, we, we've done some version of that with having pumping rooms available or privacy for that, for example, <laughs> if you're having to pump. It's 2024 and this is I just cannot, happening. I, I, I will say for those, for those of you out there that have been pregnant, <laughs> okay. And we all have our own, yeah. right. All different experiences. I had a very smooth pregnancy, knock on wood, but, you know, mm -hmm. but I will say, um, talk about there allostatic were moments, load, right. Talk about allostatic. Yeah. I mean, yeah. one, just growing a, a, a moving thing inside of your body is mm -hmm. in and of itself a very alien. I kept thinking about all like the 1980s, 90s alien movies <laughs> that like, I was always thinking they that. They explode out of them, yeah. Yeah, yeah. like, and, and my daughter just had this weird thing of kicking me in just the right spots where oh, I, no. I mean, I would, ha I would take my breath away, like, oh, like I would just have to stop for a moment, you know, um, kind of thing. Um, Whoa, but God. I mean, I had only suffered nausea really badly once. Yeah, yeah. And I was like, I do not know how other people can have morning sickness and this level of nausea and still function. I mean, yeah, it's, I mean, yeah. I think this is so ridiculous when across the nation, women's rights are being removed across yeah. the nation. Yeah. We're just starting to understand like pregnancy yeah. might temporarily be yeah. an increased demand for, for a human being. Yeah. And I, you say women's rights are being removed and that the people say, <clears throat> oh, slippery slope. And then the naysayers like, oh, it's not a slippery slope. I have a friend of mine who has an ADHD child. He's 12, I think. She lives in a very affluent suburb that has one of the school districts on her that has the most money. The PTA is talking about resegregating ADHD, autism, and neural and uh, cognitive intellectual disabilities. They're talking about putting them in their own classrooms again. They're talking about segregating again. So this is coming. This kind of chipping away at that idea of inclusion to marginalizing and not understanding. Yes, the pregnancy thing is great and it's been a long time coming and it's at the federal level, but we're seeing all these other opportunistic things happening for neurodivergent people, let's say, or kids that don't have neurotypical learning. This, this would be the case for LD kids too. Yeah. Put them back dyslexics. in their own classrooms, separate them yeah. out, which we know all the research shows that how stigmatizing that is. And that actually affords more harm. So yeah, it's a, it's a easy pile of cards to knock over and it's scary, right? It's good. Yeah. I mean, it's so now you're going to yeah. add to those kids load of being the marginalized kid and try to bring it back to the topic of, of allostatic load. Now they're not even human. They're in their own classroom. I mean, sure. I, I, you know, it's like, don't, don't reduce the range of support, yeah, increase yeah. the range of support. Right. Some, some kids, and, and we have some of these segregated classrooms in, in California. And I will say that's probably a safer place for some mm. of those people to be. Sure. And some of those people would rather be away from that sure. very big hustle bustle, 500, 2000 person, yeah. student body, right? And that's more comfortable for them. Great. But then, mm -hmm. but don't remove the inclusion. Like, don't remove yeah. that option. Like, yeah. Yeah. keep the options open. I mean, yeah. you know. The here idea is in, seeing them as less than that they're, yeah, they should that's, be. That's the problem. Right? Yeah. That's yeah, the yeah, problem. Yeah.
Yeah. yeah. Or yeah. So that's an example of a societal kind of load that may be running in the background that you're not aware of that you, I, when my have short hair like this, I have more people misgender me and that's always operating in the background. Right. And yeah. I don't think about it every day because I'm like, well, screw you, but it's there and people treat you a certain way and then it affects you. You may not even be aware of how it affects you, but it does. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I mean, for sure. You know, mm -hmm. I mean, this is why we go back to the biopsychosocial aspects of yes. functioning. Yeah. Because it's not just our biology. It's not just our psychology. There's yeah. there's a so societal social aspect yeah. to where we are. Total, total side note, if you'd like to see Dana with longer hair, I did do an <laughs> interview with Dana on Bite Size Autism, right. her first right. book on my my personal, uh, yeah. my professional podcast. Yeah. Um, and, and, and why and did I really, cut my hair? It was too much of an allostatic load every day. It was too much allostatic load for Dana. Yeah. But if you're curious, yeah, you well, can find yeah. Dana with long hair in the in the yeah. interwebs. Um, <laughs> it's just funny. I ran across that the other day, Dana, and I was like, Oh my gosh, Dana did have long hair. I don't, oh, I don't yeah, remember. Yeah, yeah. Well, anyway, yeah. what's interesting um, though? You brought up a point about the idiopathic nature of it, and that being like person specific as well. Like the, some yeah. people would want a school that doesn't have 500 people and that kind of thing. Yeah. Before we logged on, you were talking about buying the sauna blanket thing that is, oh, is yeah. like, if you can't have a sauna and some people go in a sauna. And the first thought I had was I can't do that. I have adrenal insufficiency, so I don't yep. cool off well. So I've been instructed to never go in a hot tub or a sauna yep. ever again. Yeah. That's an idiopathic version of, you know, not everything applies to everybody. Right. right. So for you, right. doing a sauna thing is actually going to have that curative effect that we talk about with helping cellular cells not die. In my case, it would be dangerous. <laughs> so you always have to look at it by person as well. There's a lot of layers to it. And that takes yeah. time and people don't want to take time. They just want to have the shortcut and be on with it. I.e., let's segregate these kids again because it's easier. Easier. It, it's yeah. just going to be easier is what they're mm -hmm. saying. Mm -hmm. Um it, yeah. No, 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 no. I know. I know. I don't know. I mean, uh, having a teenager and who's going to be launching into the world mm. and her looking at different colleges and universities across the nation, mm -hmm. especially the ones that have hockey in them uh, mm -hmm. or where there's a hockey team to play for. Um, we've already eliminated two handfuls of states because – Oh, yeah, because of what's going on. Yeah. Because of what's going on. And, you yeah. know, she's Asian. She's clearly Asian. I mean, like, my husband so and I she are both would Asian, be a, so. She'd be a fish in a bowl that is not good for her. She'd be in water that's yeah. toxic to her, and that would be a yeah. load in a bad way yeah. for her. Yeah. 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 And we're really, and she's really conscientious of those types of things. And um, we have yeah. a lot of exposure of that, just traveling to for oh, hockey yeah. tournaments yeah. and things. So we're oftentimes in in yeah. in different states and um it feels bad it just yeah yeah feels bad yeah. Yeah. you know yeah. uh, like yeah. you said it may not be um egregious and in your face kinds of things but the you can feel it the double yeah. looks yep and no the you there. know there's lots of stuff there yep. anyway yeah. um be mindful there's a, everybody there, there's a reason yeah. why like when my wife got fitted for a suit for when we were actually legally able to get married at j crew and she has a body type that men's clothing fits her better yeah. so she was in the fitting room and the j crew guy he's totally gay because everybody that works at j crew is gay right <laughs> I mean, ah! he was doing the chalk thing and all that the my most vivid memory from that was two heterosexual couples that came in who thought it was so awesome it was clear. It was all over their faces. They were smiling and they were asking us about why she was getting fitted and congratulating us on getting married. And that's not what we experience out there. So it was like this, it, it was an affirming the opposite. Like when you are in an environment that's nurturing, yeah. you can, so sometimes you can ask yourself, do I feel nurtured in this environment? And, and getting those second looks and those kinds of things from where you are, you can tell, right? Yeah versus yeah. when you're in a nurturing that might help you suss it out if you're trying to figure out what is your pond ask yourself that does this feed yeah. me or does it drain me or if you're just saying does it drain me you don't know does it feed me and if the answer is absolutely no or yeah. absolutely yes then you know the opposite of that is going to be the thing that's draining you and then you can do yeah. something about it 
Yeah. Yeah. Know yourself. Take a moment. Check in mm. with yourself. Um, and it's it's you're hard in, work, right? That self-care hard. thing, yeah. it sounds so yeah. easy. And so when you have therapists that are like, oh, self-care, self-care. And I have a lot of my clients, when I even say the word, I say, I'm going to preface this with, I know this is a loaded word, self-care. Yeah. And almost always are like, oh my God, these are people probably that went to their therapist and they're like, you're not oh, doing yeah. self-care. So I'm not going to see you anymore. These yeah. are hard things to identify and deal with. So I just want to honor that too. When you're trying to figure out what is in your bucket, be gentle with yep. yourself. These are hard to figure out. Yeah, absolutely. It is. It, there's many layers to that. So, mm -hmm. um, but it's a worthwhile endeavor and it's absolutely. worthwhile energy to spend. For if sure. you're going to spend yeah. energy anywhere, that's a good place to spend your energy, that's right. you know? Right. Um, so... Yeah. All right, everyone, you lovely people. Thank you for being here. Thank you for listening. We've we 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 you know we've got some some regulars that love to comment. We love reading your comments, and yeah. please know that we eventually get to them. I mean, yeah. like you know, yeah. um, but they are wonderful and lovely. And thank you for sharing yourselves in our community. We appreciate you, and uh, we will see you in the next episode. All right, bye everyone. Bye everybody.